Welcome back. Missy Heydrich in here now at the 2024 Women's Basketball Media Day with our contingent from Iowa State, the AP preseason poll number eight pick, number two in the preseason Big 12 poll. They were 21 and 12 a year ago and finalists in the first ever Big 12 tournament that was played here at the T-Mobile Center. Coach Finley in his 30th year at Iowa State here with his fifth year senior guard, Emily Ryan, and two sophomores in forward, Addie Brown and center, Audie Crooks. Coach, I'm going to start with you. Um, I think I would have seen it. It would have been on social media, but a lot of people would have thrown a parade when they knew that a 50-year senior point guard like Emily Ryan wanted to come back for another year. What does it say about her? But what does it say about, you talk a lot about the Iowa State way and what that means for this program to have her come back for this fifth year? Uh, Christmas came early uh, for Coach Family, but uh, we all we all are blessed to have certain players in our lives uh, that make you better, make your team better, make you better personally. Uh, and what Emily Ryan has done for our program, for uh, our university, for me personally, there's no way to quantify that. Uh, she's a leader. She's a winner. She really wanted to play with this group of players. Uh, she showed that last year and, and how she literally – drug a bunch of freshmen to the finish line and now she gets that opportunity again so uh, we're really really lucky uh, one of my longtime friends used to say when you get a great point guard they're gifts from God and when you don't have them you're in hell so uh, we're uh, we're in good shape in that regard even though the other coaches in our league didn't vote for her so uh, that's okay I'm gonna let them know yeah. <laughs> there's, there's not seven guards in this league better than her in my opinion but you know I get my opinion. I get to You say, do get your opinion. You, you do get your opinion. Okay. Which one of them is also about the state of women's basketball as we continue to raise the profile. But that is not something that is unique in Ames, Iowa, because you have always had that type of fan support. And women's basketball is a big deal in Ames and with the Iowa State community. But can you just talk about how this elevation of women's basketball not only helps the Big 12, but where it puts this league on a national level? No, I think that's one of the things the Big 12 has always been really, really good uh, is, is we've had great fan support across the board. Um, I think the new schools will continue to add to that. You're right, uh, Iowa State. This is we're not new to this discussion. We've been in this for a long, long time. Uh, I think Kansas City is a, a great place to have the tournament. Uh, the Big Twelve uh, has done a great job. I think this would be a great place for a WNBA team someday. You know, the facility and the region and the market. So. Um, We've been really lucky at Iowa State uh, that we have that kind of support, and but our our fans really enjoy watching the kind of young people that put on Iowa State uniform, and hopefully we can show them some good things this year. All right, my first question goes to the fifth-year senior guard, the all-time assist leader in Iowa State history. She set that record last season. Emily, you missed some game last season, and then I think taking stock of your career, um, what and what you want to accomplish, what went into that decision, and why this fifth year in Ames for you? Yeah, everyone always asks um, what helped you make this decision, and in my mind there was never a decision to be made. Um, it was, if I have a fifth year, I'm going to take it. And so um, in my mind, it'd be silly not to use up that fifth year and um, to have the opportunity to play for Iowa State under a coach and with the teammates that I have. It's something that I didn't have to think twice about, and I just feel really grateful to have the opportunity. Well, you are most definitely a savvy veteran, and then you got a bunch of young guns, and the freshmen are green. They don't know much when they get there. And as Coach said, you had to kind of pull them along. Um, Talk a little bit about your leadership style, both on and off the floor, because that comes into play when you have young players. They haven't been in these environments before. They haven't seen these teams, these hostile arenas. How do you help them through that, and what does that mean for this group going forward? Yeah, obviously last year there was a lot of new faces in the program, and so um, your role as someone that's been there a while is just kind of help them through the tough times and um, help them understand that there are going to be tough days and that there's another side of it. And so um, I think, honestly, obviously it was important to have a few faces there that had been there, done that, and with Coach Finn leading the way as well. But they kind of led themselves last year, and that was something that was so special about that group is that they were able to step in and as a group of freshmen, they kind of led themselves and they said this is how we're going to do it. And they showed up every single day and did that. 
Well, one of them is sitting right next to you, sophomore forward Addie Brown, a 2024 All-Freshman Team selection and an audible mention, All Big 12. Addie, you played high-level AAU, summer circuits, the whole thing. Division I basketball is a whole new world when you get into it. What did you learn about yourself? And as you talk with Coach and think about this next year, what did you focus on in the offseason to elevate your game? Yeah, I think um, for me, a big thing that I learned was that, you know, each day is a new day. Um, just taking it one day at a time. You know, you can have a rough day, but the sun's going to go down. It's going to come up the next day, and you got to go back to work. So for me, it was just taking it one day at a time and having some grace with myself, uh, you know, it being my first year, but also just kind of stepping outside of that freshman mindset. You know, we weren't we weren't freshmen. We were Big 12 women's basketball players. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's something that I learned. And um, just talking with coach and the coaching staff and just really wanted to get better at my ball handling and just looking to attack and get downhill more. Um, those are two things that I've tried to focus on. And, of course, our, uh, our team defense. So, yeah. Well, multidimensional and tough to guard. That's a good combination. Sitting next to you, one of your fellow sophomores, Center Audie Crooks, preseason all Big 12 selection. She was a first team all conference and all freshman team and just announced today an AP, AP preseason honorable mention all American selection. Audie, you had a fantastic freshman campaign. The numbers speak for themselves. But what surprised you the most in this transition from where you were to Power Five women's basketball? Yeah, um, I grew up in a really, really small town in Iowa, graduated with 36 people, so uh, the competition wasn't always the biggest or the best, so coming into Power 5 basketball, it was definitely an adjustment, especially from you know a physicality standpoint. I had to uh, put myself in the best position to, to get on the floor, so that was a lot of work. Strength and conditioning, that was a lot of work. Expanding the IQ and coming in as a freshman, there weren't, there was a lot of, of bumps in the road, but it's just, like Addie said, giving yourself grace and just being open to growth and being open to, to new experiences and being open to coaching as well. Well, I think that's a great motto. We could probably all do that a little bit better for ourselves and others. Uh, I'm going to open this up to any of our friends in the media. I know I've got a couple questions right here. We'll hit these two ladies right there. Hey, Bill. Joan Bavasini, Arizona. How are you? I want to ask Audi. Uh, it's pronounced Audi, right? Audi. Audi. That's I'm okay. Sorry. I'm You're sorry. just fine. I'm sorry. You know, I've only seen you play on TV, and, and you're pretty good, and your team's awfully good. But looking at you, I mean, you're a strong young woman. Did you play other sports in high school? I mean, what else did you play? Yeah, I did. Um, I threw for track, went to state a few times for that. I was a thrower. Yeah. I played volleyball, and I played softball as well. So, so I, I know you're good in all those sports, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. How Something did you like pick that. basketball and why basketball, let's say? Because you're quick, you have great hands. Why basketball? Sure. Um, my, both my parents played basketball, and growing up, that's all I heard. You know, I went to the same high school as my mom, so I'd walk through the halls and see her picture up on the record board, and she, I just kind of always looked up to her and knew that that was the sport that I wanted to pursue. Cindy Brunson, NBC Sports and Arizona Women's Basketball this is for the players, all of you. What is the phrase that you hear from Coach Fennelly when you know, uh-oh, he's not messing around right now? <laughs> Emily, we'll start with you. You've been around the longest. Oh, man. Um, I think, honestly, there's not just one that comes to mind. It's more so as soon as um, we start getting more um, conversations about doing things the Iowa State way, you know things are slipping a little bit. And so when you start hearing that, you know um, it's time we need to get ourselves in check and kind of get it together. Copy that. And then who has the best impersonation of coach? Oh, okay, Addie, give it. Oh, me? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to set my microphone down for this first part. A couple of <laughs> there he goes, you know, film doesn't lie, stats don't lie, Iowa State way. It seems like a very simplistic answer. I don't know. They're, they're not nervous because they know they're going to play, so they, <laughs> <laughs> they can say whatever they want to say. Don't say I'm intimidated by you anymore, Coach. I got to say that. <laughs> uh, one more question for you, Coach. Um, you, we, we were talking about it earlier before you came up here, a very challenging non-conference schedule for this group before you head into the grind of the Big 12. Uh, what is it that you want to see from this group? What sort of growth will they need to do as you head towards Big 12 play in January? Well, I, I think the biggest thing that I was most proud of is we had some openings on our schedule, and obviously we got some calls, and we asked our players, do you want to challenge yourself? And they, for sure, so... You know, you play South Carolina, you play UConn, 
um, just, you know, in, in all the other games that we have. But I think the biggest thing we want to see is can we compete against the best? And, and what, I, what I like to tell them is learn your lessons and leave the event. And that's what hopefully we can do, that we can literally learn from it. And hopefully when December 21st comes and the conference season starts, we'll be ready to face whomever, wh- wherever. And uh, I think our group understands that. Well, ladies, as you know, the film will not lie. So be ready for that <laughs> as well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. The best of luck. We look forward to seeing you and all of the Iowa State fans back here in Kansas City in March.